Can a republic truly be called a republic if the people are not getting what they want and need and the representatives are not truly representing them? On March 15, 44 BCE, Marcus Brutus and his fellow statesmen took one of the most influential stands of the classical time period. They claimed to want to save the Roman Republic, one of the foundations of worldwide democracy. But was this stand a positive stand and did it truly save the Republic? Or was it to save the power leaders of the Republic had over its people? To understand the reasons for their actions, it is necessary to look at the formation of the Republic of Rome first. The last king of Rome, King Tarquin the Proud, was a harsh tyrant, and in 509 BCE, he was removed from office, taking with him the monarchy. The Roman Republic was born, and for nearly 400 years, it thrived. Romans took the best parts of Greek democracy and made it their own, forming a strong central government. This sudden and revolutionary development in government dramatically changed Rome and its future. Citizens now voted on representatives in government, which was broken up into the Senate and many other smaller sections. This form of democratic government was largely dominated by the upper class landowners called patricians. The lower class citizens called Palavians only obtained power later in 494 BCE when the Palavian tribunes were formed, gaining the power to veto any laws that hurt the Palavians. However, this new power solved little for the Plebeians. Rome's increasing size created turmoil between the classes, and much of the population were slaves or homeless farmers. Some tried to help these men, such as Gray Gracchus and his brother Tiberius, whom one said, The savage beasts have their dens, but the men who bear arms and expose their lives for the safety of their country enjoy nothing more in it but their air and the light and wander from place to place with their wives and children. For their views, the brothers faced gruesome deaths, further showing the corruption that Rome had adopted, killing any and all that stood in the way of the patricians' power. Following the death of the Gracchus brothers, a civil war in Rome broke out. These issues were the heart of why the Roman Empire would fall centuries later. Julius Caesar was born to Aurilla and Gaius Julius Caesar on July 12, 100 BCE, into a family of noble descent. Caesar was educated by a private tutor from a young age, getting all the skills needed for a politician. In 84 BCE, Julius married a woman named Cornelia, daughter of an extremely influential man in Rome. With these newfound family connections, Caesar began to climb the political ladder looking to build on his power. One thing that's very clear about Caesar is that he wanted to be grander than his moment, uh, bigger than mortal. In 60 BCE, Caesar continued to add to his power, joining forces with Crassus, a wealthy Roman, and Pompey, a popular general. Caesar was elected consul in 59 BCE, and for the next 10 years, the men dominated as a triumvirate. Julius Caesar was named dictator for life in 44 BCE, stirring resentment as well as fear among the Senate. Some of the statesmen started to meet in secret, questioning if Caesar was a dictator or if he was becoming a king, threatening the Republic. Among these men was Brutus. His mother had been Caesar's mistress, and so Caesar was connected to his family in a way that was not entirely appealing to Brutus. And Brutus had been an opponent of Caesar. Brutus originally had fought against Caesar in the Civil War. At these meetings, they planned to overthrow and kill Caesar, taking a stand in order to save the Republic, which is how these men justified their actions. But behind that, hid an ulterior motive, the fear of losing their power and influence in the Roman government. It's not really surprising that Caesar was stabbed 23 times. He was surrounded by a mob of senators. They probably weren't very good at stabbing people to death. They were politicians. In fact, a Roman physician of the time, Antistius, wrote that of the three and twenty stab wounds, only one would have been fatal. It's not all that easy to kill someone by stabbing them with a knife. The point of the knife can be deflected by a rib. The victim can hold up their hand and try to defend themselves. You might stab your victim and it actually goes in, but it doesn't hit anything by it. Being stabbed 23 times absolutely hurts. Anybody who's ever gotten a paper cut knows just how painful being cut can be. Assuming a fatal stab wound entered Caesar's chest, there's two likely ways Caesar died. If the knife collapsed his lung, blood would have immediately begun to fill his chest cavity in between the chest wall and the lung, making it impossible 
for the lung to expand when Caesar tried to take a breath. Eventually, the pressure would collapse both of his lungs and he would suffocate or the knife severed a major blood vessel in his chest. He would have simply bled to death internally, drowning in his own blood. With 23 stab wounds, only one of them potentially fatal. It's very possible that Caesar could have lingered for quite some time, hours in fact. Was Julius Caesar's death an attempt by the senators to take a stand against the threat he posed to the Republic? Or was it an attempt to preserve their own power? For many who participated in the murder, did this to preserve their power. Yet in the case of Brutus, he truly believed that he was saving the Republic, and that Caesar and his ideas were the greatest threat the Republic had seen. Now one must ask, after all this, was the Republic truly saved, and did Brutus Stam save the Republic? The short answer is no, for after the death of Caesar, another civil war broke out, lasting for 15 years and destroying what was left of the Republic. It was a time of panic and confusion, riots and many killings. The worst of the Republic was brought out, accomplishing the total opposite of what Brutus had wanted. They thought that there was wide support in Rome for the idea that a would-be king should be put down. It's clear that they lack Caesar's feel for the mood of the people, and that they were wrong and Caesar was right. Instead of the Senate taking over and adding to the power that Caesar had threatened, they were persecuted and many were forced to flee Rome, losing their power and influences altogether. Brutus largely blamed himself for the condition of Rome and committed suicide on October 23, 42 BCE. Yet Caesar's death caused new leaders to rise to power, such as Mark Antony and Augustus Caesar, who welcomed a new age of Roman prosperity in the form of an empire. Nevertheless, the question still remains, what did Caesar's murderer truly stand for, and did Marcus Brutus in the Senate truly take a stand for the good of the Republic?